Hi, welcome to Gathering Paradise. I'm Jenny O'Neill. I'm so glad you're here with us. This poem is by Naomi Shihab Nye. It's entitled Kindness. It is incredibly beautiful and meaningful and profound about the depth of kindness and also its corollary. I will go in after the poem and explain a few things that make it even more amazing in my opinion, but I loved this poem for a decade before I realized like the extra great stuff. Kindness by Naomi Shihab Nye. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go. So you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop, the passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must talk, speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for. And then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. Oh, it's so beautiful. Golly Jiminy, I love it so much. <laughs> okay, golly Jiminy. Is Jenny getting Southern? Uh, Jiminy Cricket. That was my dad's way of saying the Lord's name in vain. And Ryder had a thing where he'd go, Jesus crackers. It was cheese and crackers, but it sounded so close. And he, I don't know how he did it. He was so little. I love this poem. I love this poem. I love this poem. I don't love my hair, apparently. But I love this poem. I have loved this poem for at least over a decade before I knew the inner, like the behind the scenes of this. And I thought everything was a metaphor. So the bus, the dead man, the people eating maize, all of this. I thought it was a long extended metaphor about traveling through the regions of kindness. And I thought it was beautiful. And it was about dehumanization and the sorrows of the world and feeling them and understanding them and learning your place in them. And I taught it before I knew this next part I'm about to tell you. Um, and I, I think it is incredible. There's a lot in this poem, but she keeps a premise, a sort of an assertion. 
the first stanza begins before you know what kindness really is. And then she's saying, you must lose things, all the stuff that you planned, that you thought was gonna happen, all your money, all your, your company, all your everything, right? And how desolate the landscape can be. And you are endlessly traveling on this bus and neither you nor the other passengers are gonna ever make it off in this long region in between kindness and this sorrow. Next stanza, again, she repeats. And when a poet repeats something, it's very important because we don't have a lot of words. We use typically much, much fewer words than a prose writer, than an essay, than a speech. So she begins again, the second stanza, before you learn the tender gravity of kindness. I think the word tender connotes a sort of a soft and gentle feeling, but gravity connotes power. Before you understand the gravity of something, how huge, tremendous, inexplicably vast and powerful something is. So the tender gravity of kindness, you must, and then she brings up seeing the dead man. And you must understand that this dead person could be you. And also this dead person was a person. And the sorrow of that, right? I think it's incredibly hard today because we see so much of the violence everywhere in the world. And we have, you know, empathy fatigue. And as humans, I don't necessarily think it's healthy to be 24 seven taking in all the sorrow of the world. However, I think that sometimes maybe to preserve our sanity or because it feels helpful at the time, we want to distance ourselves from people who are in positions of sorrow, who have lost things, who are traveling and can't get somewhere. We just want to disconnect and not think that we are like them. We get in that stanza and she's brought up like, before you know how incredibly important kindness is, how essential and how gentle and beautiful it is. You have to understand incredibly harsh realities of death, the horrors of the world and people and what they do to each other. And that is going to come back in this final stanza which again, she repeats. Each stanza starts with the same thing, before you know. And the last stanza, before you know kindness as the deepest thing, you must also know sorrow as the other deepest thing. <sighs> I think that is so transformative and profound for when we are in times of sorrow, when we are in the regions of landscapes where we can't get to kindness in ourselves or others, we can't see or feel kindness around us. And what Naomi Shihab Nye is saying here is not that literally in order to, to know kindness or be a kind person, you have to have a ton of bad things happen to you. You have to experience a ton of loss. That's not exactly the premise. What she's saying is before you can know the total depth and power of kindness, you must also know sorrow as the other deepest thing. Hold on, I, I jumped a lot. I skipped like tons of lines. That's why this doesn't make sense. Can Jenny read? I don't know.